Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another Rackspace Office Hours Hangout. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Rackspace data services and how uh, we can uh, help you manage your data so that you can focus on uh, innovating with that data. And today uh, I'm joined by my co-host Drew Cox and uh, we've also brought in a very special guest host with us today, uh, Nikki Tirado from our uh, Object Rocket uh, team. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us. Hey guys, happy mini Friday. How are you? <laughs> we're doing great, we're doing great. Um, <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks again for joining us. You know, um, you had this great idea about talking about what happens in the first, uh, you know, month or so of being a Rackspace Data Services customer. So um, I just want to turn it over to you. You've brought along a couple of other, um, uh, a couple of other uh, people from the from the team, and uh, I'll just turn it over to you to uh, to start talking. Oh, okay, actually, awesome. Actually, oh. actually, Nikki, hang on. I, I did this. Oh, last sure. time. I totally forgot to mention that if you are watching at home. Um, <laughs> you can uh, you can join in on the conversation uh, by asking a question through the qu the question and answer app that we have on the um, uh, on Google Plus here. And then if you're also watching, uh, just drop a comment into YouTube, or if you're uh, tweeting along with us, you can use the hashtag CloudQA, and uh, we can uh, get your comments into the show. So uh, now I think we're good uh, to turn it over to you, Nikki. Awesome. Thanks. We need those logistics. So, hey guys, thanks everyone for joining. My name is Nikki Torado and I'm a data services advocate in my hometown and my favorite place in the world, New York City. I'm coming to you guys live from Brooklyn and really I'm here with my two of my favorite teammates, Andy Woodard and Danny Gibbons, and I'll give them a second to introduce themselves. But really what we're here to do today is to do what we do every single day out here in New York and in Austin and that's help our customers figure out and set the right expectations when they come on board with Object Rocket. So the first question that I want to answer that you guys probably have is what is Object Rocket if we're talking about data services, you know you guys are talking about all these different terms so you can can you please define them? So let me define it just to clarify a few bits. So Rackspace as you know is our parent company of Object Rocket. Object Rocket was purchased by Rackspace about two years ago and so Object Rocket you can think of it as sort of the data services umbrella for Rackspace. So that is all encompassing of our MySQL offering, our Redis offering, our MongoDB offering, our Cloud Big Data offering as well and then we also have a Hadoop piece um, intertwined with that. And so data services is really the, like I mentioned, the overarching kind of umbrella that's called Object Rocket. And so that's how we define it here at Rackspace. My role here in New York City is to educate and equip folks that are looking to use any one or a combination of, which is you know, becoming more and more kind of the right thing to do, um, any of these tools. And so I'm joined today by Andy, Andy and Danny. And really what we're going to do today is answer all of your questions. But first what we're going to do is just give you kind of an overview of what you can expect within the first month of coming on board to Object Rocket, again, which is the data services division of Rackspace be it as a Rackspace customer or be it as a brand new customer or be it as another hosting provider customer, um, let's say you're an AWS customer, um, when you come on board with us we're going to give you kind of those expectations and then answer any questions. So that being said, Andy, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and then after that, Danny, you can follow as well. Andy, you might want to come off mute. It happens to the best of us. Um, there we go. Your voice. <laughs> that voice. Um, my name is Andy Woodard. Uh, I'm Migrations Manager at Object Rocket. I've been with Object Rocket for about a year. Been with Rackspace total um, close to four years now. Um, and basically what I do is I find the easiest, cleanest way to uh, move your data over to our platform and with the least amount of downtime possible because we all know that's important. So, Thank you. Awesome. Danny, go for it. Cool. Uh, my name is Danny Gibbons, and I am the technical account manager here at Object Rocket. Um, I have been at Rackspace for about three and a half years, and I've been with Object Rocket since last summer, so coming up on a year um, now. I work uh, directly with Andy to help kind of uh, onboard new customers, um, as well as I work with a lot of our large kind of uh, pro-level customers. Um, help them get set up and then uh, continue to work with them um, and really all of our customers to help um, optimize you know, their, their solution. Like you said, Nikki, whether they're using just Mongo or whether they're using Mongo and Redis or you know, even MySQL uh, nowadays kind of uh, taking over all of the datas from Rackspace. So uh, just kind of uh, making sure everyone um, knows, like you said, what to expect and, and how to get on board. Uh, so Andy and I are kind of a tandem with uh, new customers coming on. 
Cool. So let's get to the juicy bits now that everybody knows who is on the call. So, you know, every, people come to me oftentimes, they say, Object Rocket, that sounds so cool. You know, uh, I'm, I'm signed up. I went to objectrocket.com and I signed up. And I just wanted to spell kind of two or three bits before we kind of get into the actual what happens after you sign up because I get this question all the time. So they say, cool, I heard you guys have Cloud Big Data. Um, I heard you guys have MySQL, but I went to objectrocket.com and you know, after I signed up, I'm in the control panel, and some of the options I have are MongoDB and Redis. And so, Danny, I don't know if you can open with just talking about a little bit about how, one, how do Rackspace customers come on board with things like MongoDB and Redis, and then two, um, you know, as an outside customer, if they sign up for MongoDB and Redis, and let's say they want to cloud big data, just walk us through kind of that process of how a customer can make that sort of a seamless transition and use all of our data services. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so currently, uh, we actually just rolled out a feature uh, in the reach control panel, which is the uh, the cloud control panel for uh, overall rack space to where um, from when a customer logs into that reach control panel, um, they have the option of creating an object rock account via their reach control panel. So if they are currently using MySQL or, you know, like you said, the, the cloud big data offering and they want to, you know, kind of kick the tires on Mongo or Redis, uh, something like that, they are able to uh, create, or if they already have an account that maybe say they did try out but never got around to really using and, and now you know they have a new project or <clears throat> a new client or something like that, that that's going to be utilizing Mongo or Redis, um, they're able to actually link those accounts. Um, the devs are still working on, on kind of bridging all of the gaps and, and making that kind of a seamless, you know, I hate to be cliche, but single pane of glass kind of um, experience where there's, you know, just one control panel and one billing system and, and all that stuff. Um, for, as of right now, the, the, like you said, Nikki, the Redis and the MongoDB are going to be through the Object Rocket portal, um, and then the database as a service MySQL offering and the Cloud Big Data is going to be through that reach uh, cloud control panel. Um, but thankfully, our, our dev team is awesome, and they were able to roll out um, that kind of uh, linkage of accounts or the ability to create an account from the reach control panel, which... Um, once you spin that up, it'll just redirect you to the object rocket control panel. So, Awesome, Danny. So thanks for the clarification. So it sounds like I want MongoDB, I want Redis, I'm going to go to objectrocket.com. I want MySQL, I want Cloud Big Data, I'm going to go to rackspace.com. But you know what? At this point, our devs are working on it. Everything is coming together, and the support team remains seamless. So Yeah, and good. it is. You know, we have, we have our team, Andy and I um, have our team up here in Austin. Um, don't know. You can see that much. It's a little cloudy outside. Um, there's a lot of folks up here for South by Southwest, but um, um, Andy and I are based up here. We're smack dab right in the middle of downtown in Austin, but um, our kind of partner team, the, the Rackspace Data Store Service team, um, does work out of Castle um, down in San Antonio. Um, I'd say we get down there about once a week, and that team comes up here about once a week, so... Um, we're, you know, constantly talking and, and in communication, as well as with the other teams throughout, you know, um, cloud infrastructure or managed cloud or enterprise with Rackspace. Um, if you have another team at Rackspace and, and you know you're utilizing our services, we're we're plugged into all of that. So um, we're I work with the other account managers. I work with the other techs. Andy works with the other techs, especially if say they're migrating from, you know, a cloud instance over to, um, they don't want to mess with MongoDB anymore, so they're moving off of a cloud instance, and Andy's hooking them up, uh, you know, getting them an instance on Object Rocket, uh, working with their teams over at Rackspace, and, and making sure it's, like you said, kind of a seamless uh, process. It's kind of paramount for us over here. Cool. So I'm, a cus I'm an existing Rackspace customer. Um, I sign up for MongoDB or Redis. Awesome. I'm on MagicRocket.com. I'm a customer. My first question is, let's say I'm an AWS customer. How the heck am I going to get all my data over there? Do, am I responsible for this? Can you guys help me? And if you guys help me and something goes wrong, like, can I go sue you? Like, what can I do? Like, <laughs> are, are there repercussions? Like, how much do, do I need to hire a consultant at $300 an hour? Like, Andy, can you tell me? Like, help me. Like, what do I need to know? What do I need to figure out? And what do you guys do for me? So, yeah, basically... Um, we will receive some sort of ticket or communication from a customer that says, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. How do I get migrated? Um, what do I need to do? And I will get involved and I will start asking questions uh, such as what kind of configuration do you have? 
how much data do you have, what, what kind of downtime requirements do you have, because those are all very good considerations. I need to know how big you are so I know what we're going to move you into. Um, you know, if you can take a lot of downtime, at, you know, if you've got some kind of um, data set that's generally cold that you read from every now and again or write to every now and again, you know, that changes the way that I'm going to approach how we're going to move data onto the platform. Um, but generally I look for whatever the lowest downtime uh, solution is. Um, if that means that, you know, I have to go and sometimes I have to go in and take a look at the servers themselves on whatever service provider um, will work out some kind of way to that I can remote into those servers and take a look at what the configuration looks like, what um, the the way that Mongo set up, because um, sometimes that's a little bit easier than trying to ask for commands to be run and output to be given back. So um, we generally what we do is we have uh, we have a chat room that we can open up with customers so we can do uh, direct one-on-one -on -one communication. This makes it a lot easier to copy and paste stuff across um, if we do need to do that. Um, so basically what we do is we just open that line of communication. Sometimes it comes through sales, through, um, you know, you're coming in, you've talked to sales a little bit, or sometimes you're just coming in cold to the, the website. You have your instance, what do I do next? You can raise a support ticket, or um, you can email us directly. Sometimes the existing teams at Rackspace will reach out to us for help. Um, and as soon as we get, the, as soon as I get that first line open to the customer, um, then that's when all of my questions will start coming in and um, kind of start getting the process going. And I try and move pretty quickly because I know that everybody hates having to worry about migrating data and what's the process going to look like and how's it going to happen. So I try and take all of that off of your plate as possible because I, I know that nobody likes that. Nobody, nobody wants to worry about it. So um, anything that I can do to make to take that off your plate is is what I work towards. So, so are, are there any appreciable differences between uh, coming from someone like uh, Amazon or your own data center where you've got uh, deployment of, of Mongo, your data lives, um, and then coming to Rackspace versus uh, coming from Rackspace Cloud or from your own physical hardware within Rackspace? Are there things to be aware of in that? Uh, in one situation versus another, or is it all pretty much uh, the same type of process migration regardless of that uh, target and uh, original point? Yeah, so generally not really. Um, it's, it's all about levels of access. So um, whether you're with AWS or SoftLayer or some of these other providers or you're, you have a co-location with somebody or you have your own data center, all it is is just access. I mean, as long as I can get access into the servers or, I mean, we have to open up a line of access between us and, and wherever the data lives now anyway in order to generally move it. So usually that that process right there, it, it really doesn't matter. It could be anywhere. It could be everywhere. You could be, you could come from, move from Hong Kong to the U.S. if you want to. Probably take us a little while, but you can still move and, I mean, we can try and make it as seamless as we possibly can, but really there's no difference where you're coming from. Um, Latency so. concerns really end up being the only appreciable difference. Yeah, really, really that's that's one of the main differences. Um, other hosting providers have different ways that they do things. Some will not provide things like admin access or um, it, it takes a push to get things like that for us to be able to, to do some of the actions that we need to in order to migrate. But um, other service providers or databases of service providers that we've had customers uh, move to us from, we've generally had very little issue with getting the things that we need to. Um, so um, I, I really think that latency is probably the only main differentiator between like what location you're coming from. But most people are sticking to the same region, same data center um, area at least. So the latency is not a huge difference. But I've still moved people from New York into Chicago or, or Dallas or from um, like U.S. West in San Jose into uh, Virginia, and it's not really been a huge deal. I guess across the pond is going to be a little bit trickier, but generally they stay close to where they're at. So Cool, and I think we have a question, Alan. Yeah, actually we did. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, thanks, thanks Andy and Danny for uh, for getting us started here. And it looks like Skip jumped in uh, with a question. 
this is a, this is an interesting question, and I think that it speaks to just Object Rocket in general, um, and and kind of the data services practice area in general. But why would we want Object Rocket instead of Rackspace Cloud? Ask Skip. Cool. I mean, I can start it, and then Andy can probably, yeah. you know, make it sound a lot better. <laughs> but but um, there is a lot of a little little idiosyncratic things with Mongo that people tend to find out on the fly and while they're in production. Um, we've happened to run into a majority of those things. Um, for example, 3.0 is just, just now coming out, and there's a lot of customers that we've had have talked about, uh, you know, when can we move to 3.0, when can we move to 3.0. Uh, Kenny Gorman, who um, is one of the founders of Object Rocket, who now works alongside uh, the Rackspace CTO John Ingates um, for for you know kind of championing that uh, Rackspace. Um, he's already started testing 3.0, but there's a you know a lot of a lot of open issues let's say with 3.0. So our job kind of is to work through all that um, to kind of test all that out, make sure everything's copacetic, everything's you know on the level, um, and then we get you onto the platform, and then you can stop worrying about that. Um, none of that's your concern anymore. You don't really have to concern yourself with optimizing queries because we'll handle that for you. Our, our DBAs are awesome. Um, we have one one uh, Mongo master that's now in the UK, um, and then we have Kim Wilkins who's here in the US who's uh, fantastic. Uh, work with you to kind of optimize your queries, make sure everything's running smoothly. If there's anything that we see, uh, you know, that maybe concerns us, we can kind of point it out right away, get that all taken care of. Um, so there's a lot less on your plate uh, by moving to Object Rocket than there would be just kind of running it on your own and, and having to be, you know, your own engineer, your own DBA, your own ops guy, uh, your own developer, uh, kind of all that stuff. So I'll let, I'll let Amy kind of piggyback off that. Yeah, so, I mean, Danny's absolutely right. There's, But there's a lot of things that, that people don't consider. They look at Mongo and they say, hey, I, I run Mongo or I run Redis, and, you know, it's no big deal. Um, I could run it. It's pretty easy. From, like, a, a like a small standpoint from, you know, single server or even to, like, a three-node replica set or something, um, a lot of people look at it as, you know, this is pretty easy. I, I don't have very large data sets. I'm not doing a lot of... Uh, I'm not pushing a lot of activity to it. So it seems pretty easy, but... As you grow as a company, um, and as that activity scales, your data scales, uh, it gets to be a bit of a challenge because when you have to start considering sharding, and um, or if you're looking at uh, other HA possibilities, especially with using things like Sentinel and Redis, it, it gets to be a lot harder from an operational perspective. And then, as Danny said, once you get into query optimization, you can you can literally go insane trying to tune all the knobs that there are to tune in Mongo. And uh, we have people who've been doing it for a long time, not just with current iterations of Mongo, but even some of the early iterations of Mongo. And from a migrations perspective, I always start asking those questions about scale ahead of time. Because the last thing that we want to do is just kind of move you over and then say, okay, cool, you're here but then kind of leave it as like a now what? And, you know, one of the first first things after we're done is that I would always reach out to the DBA team and say, hey, DBAs, um, this is what we've done. This is what this customer is doing. This is what their data set looks like. This is um, a little bit of background, things that we've talked about through the migration process and things that I've seen from usage and everything. Then they'll go in and they will basically profile your data access patterns and stuff like that. They'll look at the current indexes and they'll make suggestions on shard keys and things that we can use to scale. And really it's it's the level of service that we can provide for all those things. I mean, besides the fact that we have hardware that we've tuned specifically to Mongo and to Redis to use for the, the platforms, we've taken a lot of time and care into making sure that those knobs that we can tune from the hardware perspective are tuned specifically for the versions of Mongo. And now that's why we're working really hard to test 3.0 because with the new pluggable storage engines, it makes it a little bit different in the way that we have to work operationally. So we're looking at different things that we can do to help 
make that as seamless as possible, a transition, when we start rolling out 3.0. So really, it's from everything from, from even the early on sales team to, to working with Danny to working with me on migrations into our customer data engineers or our DBAs and our operations folks, 24-7 um, operations, monitor every aspect of the instance, and we just want to take that operational headache away from you so you can just get out there and do the fun stuff. Do the cool things. Work on the feature requests. Work on building the business. We'll take care of keeping data integrity, keeping you up and running. And that's, I mean, that's really what we want to do. So that's, that's really a huge difference about, like, if you try and run it on cloud by yourself. And I've done this. Before coming to Object Rocket, I had an in-production Mongo cluster that I was managing. And while it was fun, it was cool to set it up, after a while it just got to the point where I said, I don't, I don't want to manage this for my application anymore from a developer's perspective. Um, so when I moved over to Object Rocket, I realized, well, well, I didn't want to do that for myself. Doing it for other people is really cool because everybody uses Mongo differently. And that's, that's the part that I love is seeing how everybody else finds a way to use Mongo. So um, that's really what we, what we strive for is just to get everything off your plate and um, try to grow, help you grow the way that you should grow and help you work with Mongo the way that is going to help you succeed, I guess. I see it as kind of analogous to uh, doing your taxes. Like the first time I ever did taxes uh, for myself, I didn't make anything. I didn't have anything complicated, and it was it was okay. I mean, I could do my own taxes that way. But as I brought on, you know, a, a spouse, and we got different jobs, and there's other lines of income coming in, it got pretty complicated. And I don't run a business, and I don't have any of those ridiculously complicated things to consider. But um, I would absolutely not try to do my taxes if I ran my own business. I would get somebody who's an expert to take care of that for me so I could go and worry about my marketing strategy and how I was going to improve my feature set and things along those lines because that's what's important to my business. Taxes have to happen, but at a certain level of complexity, uh, offload that to an expert so you can get back to your business. And I think that's the same story that, that we're sharing here. You could absolutely uh, run your own Mongo cluster in Rackspace Cloud. People do. I, I see it all the time. But you get this additional value layer that um, as you're peeling back that onion, you see, wow, that was, that was so much better than I could have done it myself. And then that was so much easier. And you start seeing all of these different components come together. Don't take that on yourself if you don't have to. We have a, a reason uh, that we offer this solution. It's going to help you. And so, I don't know, I was, you were talking and I was uh, thinking through... Uh, those you already had you already had two cups at La Colombe. You already had two cups at La Colombe, Drew. That's what it is. <laughs> that coffee, I know. Yeah, Andy. Andy had mentioned the uh, <laughs> the Fusion I/O cards, and that that's a big big thing about kind of fine tuning um, all the hardware. Um, you know, having the Mongo experts that we have in house, and having the people who are really familiar with it. You're right, Drew. That's that, that's huge because they've taken that expertise and kind of set up the perfect hardware stack to, to kind of run everything on um, and then kind of piggybacking off of, of what Drew and, and Andy had alluded to to earlier about you know customers coming on uh, in different ways um, and that I think a lot of it has to do with with that added value in the, the actual migration uh, being able to move that over um, if you know there's really kind of three separate cases one would be you know the current rack space customer one would be um, the you know the big customer from somewhere else that's coming in through sales, and then just you know the the everyday customer who finds the website, signs up, and then is trying to move their stuff over. Um, so I, either we're working you know directly with sales as part of like the you know I guess it's called post sales process or uh, pre sales. Pro I don't I don't know all hey, these. Danny, these you're showing sales you're showing terms. us how much of a salesperson you are. It's fantastic. We love yeah, I guess. I, I guess. Um, so either Andy and I are kind of inserted there, kind of early on, to help kick the process off. Um, if they're a Rackspace customer, we're usually working directly with the Rackspace team to to kick off those conversations. And and as Andy mentioned before, um, if you email support at objectrocket.com, that immediately kicks off a, a ticket. Um, we get an alert that a new ticket has been created um, throughout our, our company-wide chat, so it's it's really all eyes 
Um, so you know that that attention to detail and, and everything is is another thing that that Andy and Drew, you guys both have mentioned. So is, is that the way you would know. recommend? Is okay. that the way you'd recommend getting started? So somebody. Um, yeah. So yeah, if, if someone has yeah if, yeah if someone already has a Rackspace instance, you know, um, talking to your to your account team about that. Um, and, and most of them know how to get in touch with us. Uh, we're continuing. A, a Sherman Donegan, who's our uh, support manager, um, he and I will actually be down there next week to give some uh, kind of road shows, uh, make sure that you know everyone, and kind of basically what we're doing right now, um, but internally, you know, making sure um, everyone knows how to get a hold of us and, and you know all those good things, just kind of making sure everything is as cohesive as possible. Um, so in, in, in doing that, yeah, if you if you currently have, you know, cloud or, or dedicated and starting those conversations with your account team, um, and if not, you know, if you, if you want to email myself directly uh, or just, you know, hit support at objectrocket.com and kick off a ticket, and, and, you know, it's partly my job to make sure all the right people get involved with that. So I think you brought up a good point, um, Danny, earlier. So getting back to kind of, you know, I'm an existing Rackspace customer or I'm a new person coming through sales or I'm a person that came on board just signing up to the website. I'm signed up. Um, what happens now? I get an email from someone that, out of, is it like an automated like bot email, Danny is your pretty face on there? And then once I get that email, you know, am I treated the same as every other customer? You talked about pro customers. Can you just talk a little bit about kind of like who's going to contact me and why am I not a pro customer? I think I'm cool and I should be pro. So is everyone pro? Like, what, what is that pro so thing? Ty so typically what we do um, is, is there is just, just the nature of the beast and automating all of the things. Um, once, you, once you create that account, um, I believe it's within, I think it's within the first 24 hours um, you're yeah, hit with, with, with that automated email. Um, and then sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours, typically, um, myself, uh, maybe someone from sales, uh, maybe even Sherman, um, our, our support manager, someone will typically kick off uh, kind of a, a welcome ticket with you, um, introducing you to, to kind of how the ticketing system works, how to best get in touch with us, kind of going over all of that, um, asking if there's any questions you have, if maybe you want to set up some time to talk. Um, as far as the the, the pro level, um, typically what we do that for is we do it with with customers who are already you know uh, enterprise level customers at Rackspace that come over. Obviously, you know that that you know kind of shares the the service level with that. And then um, if you're if you're coming on board and you're planning on bringing you know upwards of like a, I think our our largest size instance um, through the UI is a, a 250 gig instance. So if that's if that's where you feel you're getting started at, um, then that's that's kind of where we set the bar as, as far as a pro customer. Um, the the instances range from a, a one gigabyte, which is just a replica set, um, which is um, two nodes and an arbiter, um, and we're, we we allow you to scale up to five gigs on that. Um, and then we do have you know the five gig, uh, the twenty gig, the fifty gig, the hundred gig, and then like I said, the, the two fifty gig. Um, so if you're going to be, if you're starting off on either that 100 or that 250, um, then we're, we're going to have bigger conversations around expected growth, upcoming projects, um, things of that nature so that we can make sure that we're getting ahead of things. Um, if you're starting out just kind of kicking the tires on, on a 5 gig or maybe you currently have about you know 12 or 13 gigs worth of data so you come on to like a 20, um, then, then we're still, well, you know, welcome and open to having those conversations. Um, but as far as like the, the, the levels, there's definitely a, a more focus, um, the higher amount of the data that's on the platform. Cool. So it sounds like I'm on board. I get a nice email from Gibbons or I know Christine Hirsch who's near and dear to my heart, another friend. She's one of your counterparts. So you might get an email from them. Um, we're going to be in contact with you guys. But one of the things you said was, you know, you guys are going to send out an email. We send I'm going to get an email asking if I have any questions, but a lot of times, Danny, I don't know what I don't know. So what if I have questions that I don't know that I have? I mean, is there like a resource? Is there a forum, wink, wink, that I can go to that I can ask questions openly that maybe people like Alan or Allison Ulster would answer? Is there a data services forum out there? Uh, there, there is, Nikki. There is. I, think, uh, I think you put that together. 
Yeah, cool. That's so, right. That's right. You did put that together. Please plug. So there's a data services form out there that Alan and the wonderful community team um, manage along with us. They're kind of like the front lines. And Alan, I don't know if you want to talk about just kind of you know I know everyone knows, but if you can just reiterate kind of how the form works and you know why it would be useful for folks that you know are just coming on board with Object Rocket um, and data services. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, uh, thank you for that uh, <laughs> unsolicited uh, uh, promotion. I really appreciate that. So, um, yeah, so, so I, I work at the community at community at rackspace.com, and it is a uh, open question and answer forum. And so we have a lot of customers that have questions, and we found that a lot of customers ask the same questions. And so instead of um, taking up uh, Danny and Andy's valuable time to answer them individually, we find that a lot of customers actually go in and, and, they, and they search uh, the internet. They search Rackspace support for those those answers to those questions first, and we think that we can provide fanatical support by answering those questions before they have to come uh, come to ask us. Um, now, uh, now uh, you know Danny Danny's there in that in that um, you know beginning role where he's going to start working with you right out of the box, and um, he'll probably help you answer a lot of those questions. But um, you know it, it can also provide a place to. Uh, find more questions to to ask Danny. You know, uh, Nikki, you mentioned not knowing what you don't know, and and this is a great place where you can say, well, I've, I'm considering this, and then find four or five other articles that describe other things that you had never considered. Talk to a a, a guy like Andy that's uh, and and Danny that are very knowledgeable, and they can uh, really help you to uh, understand your specific needs. Uh, that was fun. Uh, understand your specific needs and um and and how you can uh, set up Object Rocket uh, just for you. Cool. So it sounds like I'm on board, uh, be it came in through sales, rack space, unassisted, Danny and I are BFFs. I've got a place, you know, kind of like a resource library, if you will, where I can brain dump, no one's going to judge me, judgment-free zone. People are going to, you know, kind of collaborate there. I can meet other Object Rocket users that are maybe struggling as well. I can meet other rack space users. So it sounds like rack space, Object Rocket, there's, there's a lot of crossovers here. Um, I guess, you know, one of the last things, questions that I get from customers and, you know, oftentimes I'm sure Andy gets as well, is just, you know, now that I'm on board with you guys, from a security standpoint, I mean, you guys haven't name dropped any customers and I'm pretty sure that's intentionally, like, can I trust you guys with, with that data? Like, we get a lot of questions about security. So, Andy, I don't know if you want to talk about when you're doing the migration process or when customers are on board with us in the first 30 days. You know what? What can I expect just from a security standpoint? Because that's a huge hot topic right now. If, if there's anything you can elaborate on there. Um, yeah, I can talk to that a little bit. So, generally, what we do is in in the absolute early stages, when you very first create an instance, we explicitly deny all traffic to the instance. Um, I mean, we there's a lot of a lot of uh, other places out there, and just by default, Mongo itself, you just Create Mongo, you spin it up, no authentication, um, and it's basically open as open as, as you have the server that it's living on. We just lock it down completely; like you can't access it. The first order of business is once you create your instance, um, you create your first database, create your user. The next thing that you need to do is uh, we have a security section in the UI for the instance where you would actually add IPs of the servers that you want to access Mongo. Um, so at first, a lot of things that a lot of times the, the first thing that we will hear about is, you know, I created my instance and I can't access it. I try and and you know I get a connection error, and we find that there's no IPs at it. So of course nobody can get in because we're not allowing anybody in yet. So getting the IPs added to those uh, ACLs for the instance is is a huge first step. Next thing is that we have authentication turned on for every instance. So as soon as you come in, you create your instance, you create your database, you have to create a user and a password. And um, by default, we don't give out admin access to uh, the entire instance just because a lot of times uh, admin access, some people can know enough about Mongo to be dangerous. And we kind of, kind of keep that layer pulled back a little bit because... Um, we don't any, want anybody to accidentally do something to their instance, especially if they're running in production. Um, so we kind of we kind of hold that back, um, but it's there if needed. But uh, a lot of the access is, is there. Plus, we provide two connect strings in the UI. We provide one that's just over plain text port. We provide another one that's over a certificateless SSL. Um, most drivers today, actually all of the Mongo drivers that are official have an 
SSL true config option that you can add to your connection. So you can you can do that. As far as SSL through the Mongo binaries themselves, it's not uh, compiled by default, but there are uh, documentation. There's documentation on Mongo's website on how to compile the Mongo binaries with SSL. So you can use things like the Mongo shell over SSL if you need to do ad hoc queries. But usually via code, um, it's a lot easier. Um, so that's that's what we do um, whenever you you have the instance. As far as migrations go, we do everything we can to utilize those secure channels in order to move the data onto the platform. So. Yeah, and, and Andy, just to add to that too, uh, if there are customers who are uh, already on, on Rackspace and they're using the, the ServiceNet network for internal communications, uh, we, we can provide them uh, with ServiceNet access for their MongoDB instances, and that's just another another layer of security. Um, and then the complete opposite way, if, if security is not something you're worried about at all, um, you can always add those any rules um, to the ACLs. Um, sometimes people will do that when they're first getting up and started before they know uh, the IP ranges that they're going to be added or anything like that, but that's definitely something we don't you know, suggest that you do. <laughs> so, Danny, you mentioned something um, pretty cool that I don't think we um, kind of emphasize enough. You talked about um, accessing servers over ServiceNet. Can you just explain yep. a little bit about why would I care about ServiceNet? Yeah, so at, at, at Rackspace, we have an internal network called ServiceNet. Um, you're able to use that for both the MongoDB and the Redis instances now, um, and you're able to access those. Um, one, that, that helps with bandwidth. Um, since it's all internal network, you're not going to be you know, spending a, a lot of money or, or any money um, on, on transferring uh, data over that internal network. Um, it's going to be a little bit quicker, and it's going to be a lot more secure um, since it all, is all internal and it's not public-facing. Yeah, and I think to go back to uh, Skip's question that we had just uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, he asked why would we want Object Rocket instead of Rackspace Cloud. I think that that really speaks to no, you want Rackspace Cloud and Object Rocket. It's the uh, it's the and there. Sí, señor. And at the end of the day, I, I think you know there's a huge kind of cloud and misconception that we're two separate companies, but we're all rolled into one. It's like PB and J. So um, yeah, you don't have to choose one or the other. We're all rockers, and we're all here to serve you. It's just a matter of, you know, what's the best fit. So um, so yeah, cool. So just to recap, I'm a customer. I come in, Gibbons, Christine. You guys are my technical account managers, aka my friends. You're gonna quarterback kind of people like Andy, that is a migrations manager, to make sure that if I'm coming from AWS, we're using Direct Connect to get my data over there securely, or if I'm coming from another hosting provider, or even if I'm coming from Rackspace, you're gonna leverage those people like Andy to make sure that that process happens as seamlessly as possible with at least with the least amount of downtime as possible. I think Andy, you said you were up until 3 a.m. this morning doing something, and you so graciously agreed to do this call. Wink, if that's the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we go. And Andy, um, Andy is the man. <laughs> Andy is the truth. Dot com. So cool. So so Danny's gonna quarterback that. Then he's also gonna quarterback. You know, if my queries are running slow. We're going to, you know, one of the DBAs like David Murphy, who's a Mongo master in the UK, or Kim Wilkins, who's like the database denizen, I think is her, her underground name. She's going to turn that profile on. She's going to go through it. She's going to work tireless, tirelessly to make sure that they're optimized. Um, and then, Danny, you're going to meet with me, what, like once a month or as, as often as needed just to review the account, make sure that, you know, things are happening as they should. And then if I want to speak to you at any time, we have like an internal chat where I have instant access to you and the team. Yep, uh, that, that's correct. So uh, unfortunately right now I'm the one-man wolf pack. Christina has, has um, upgraded herself. Um, she will. leveled up. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm, I'm the one-man wolf pack, okay. but yeah, like you said, I have, I have some customers who want to talk once a week, some that want to talk every other week, uh, some want to talk once a month, uh, some are cool and don't want to talk. Uh, after the initial kind of migration, onboarding thing, um, they're like, all right, cool, we're good, um, and you know, I'll, I'll, from time to time I'll reach out to those customers and just make sure everything's going all right and, and see if, you know, Things have changed. If they if they need more uh, assistance or if they have any kind of upcoming projects or anything, because that's something you know we typically like to stay ahead of things. It's it's better to to have you know more too much time to plan, I guess, rather than not enough time to plan. Um, 
so it, it, it just it just kind of depends, and and yeah, um, those those pro level customers will have the hip chat rooms, so they're they're able to to get in and and give us a, a shout whenever they want, um, and you know we're we're monitoring those rooms uh, pretty much twenty four seven. We have the UK folks that act as as the third shift um, for the for the US people and vice versa with us and our, our UK customers. So uh, there's there's always someone around and, and we're always working to make sure that, that everybody's uh, happy and, and consuming all of the data. Okay. To be fair, and, you're uh, like a one-man dire wolf pack. So oh, yeah. It's, it's a little yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so just be aware. I'll take it. Be aware. It's pretty awesome. Cool. So and okay. So cool. So I have the team available via buy hip chat from a pro customer or support at Object Rocket, or I have your direct email. Um, let's say I don't want to talk to you because I, I just don't like you for some reason, which is crazy because everyone loves Gibbons. Impossible. But let's say I don't, and I'm just you know what? I just like want to chat with someone and chat and see if, uh, what other problems people are running into because I don't know what I don't know, and I want to have foresight into problems that may arise. I can go to community. <clears throat> excuse me, communitydirectspace.com and go to the data services forum. Uh, yesterday we had a question about Procona. You know, answer that really quickly. Um, I know Alan and Allison, you guys are like a cool duo with the name thing too. Anyway, you guys are all over that forum. Um, and then if I need other resources from like Mongo Masters and people like Kenny that his title is so long, I can't pronounce it, but he's like the truth. He's like CTO, Office of the CTO, Principal Data Architect, whatever. He's a Mongo Master. He knows his stuff. Um, he writes blog posts all the time at engineering.objectrocket.com. So there's all these resources, um, whether I want to speak to someone or I just want to search online. And, I mean, it sounds like I'm going to be a happy Object Rocket customer. Is there anything else you guys want to add, things that I can expect within the first 30 days? Are you guys going to send me pizza? No? Okay, that's my job. That's why I said that. So I'm, I'm Nikki. And <laughs> all the, the other cool and fun stuff is up to me. Um, if you guys want a list of where we are, events, um, here's my shameless plug. Um, myself, I'm joined by two beautiful um, blonde-headed geeks, um, Ashley McNamara and Laura Watkins, and we span the entire U.S., and we are out and about at all times um, answering questions whether you are a Rackspace customer or not. And so we're, we're constantly at events. Um, we just wrapped, wrapped up Reddit's conference. I know we're going to Pi conference. We're going to GlueCon in Colorado. We're going to ApacheCon in Austin. And so there's just all these events out there that if you guys have questions and you want to find us in person, you can always hit us up at Twitter at ObjectRocket.com. Um, so yeah, that's my plug. But it sounds like the first 30 days I'm going to be comfy, cozy. I'm going to be loved. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add? Or Alan, I turn it back over to you. Well, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I, it looks like they, uh, you guys have anything to add on that? I mean, I'm sure that beyond that first 30 days, we'll still keep you company cozy. And, uh, oh, yeah, for we, sure. But we, we definitely want to get out in front of it on the first, uh, you, you know, at your first experience um, with us. And, you know, uh, Drew and I and Danny were all on the uh, cloud launch team for, uh, for new uh, cloud customers. And, um, you know, we saw a lot of great success with that, with getting our customers set up and just proactively reaching out and doing that extra little bit of hand-holding. So um, really great to see that you're continuing that tradition here at, uh, at Object Rocket. Yep, I, I learned from the best. <laughs> Shucks. Um, we did have a couple of other questions that popped up here. So uh -huh. um, thanks, uh, thanks, Skip and Robert, for asking these questions. Let's go ask uh, Robert's question first, Tyler, if you can bring that one up. Uh, Robert asks a question, does your team have the ability to move customers that are currently using relational databases, so MS SQL, MySQL, et cetera, over to Object Rocket seamlessly? So I'll go ahead and tackle this one. Um, so, well, a lot of the migrations that we handle are Mongo to Mongo, bringing other customers on there using Mongo or Redis someplace else. Um, we do encounter customers that are using things like MS SQL, MySQL, Oracle, um, very rare occasion DB2, um, but we have so all of our DBAs were not Mongo are not Mongo DBAs from the start. They were Oracle DBAs, 15 years experience. They were MySQL DBAs, 15 years experience with commits into you know you know the major branches of of MySQL stuff like that. Um, they know relational databases, and while moving those relational databases to Mongo may take a bit of uh, so, like an ETL process where we extract, transform, and load the data into Mongo, which is a little bit different um, structure than those traditional relational databases. We have resources that can talk to you about 
what your usage looks like and why you're trying to move relational to you know, non-relational. Sometimes it's a good fit, sometimes it's not. So well, we, we want to kind of sit down and talk about, you know, what are you looking to do? What are you looking to, to achieve with that? So those DBAs have the experience with the relational and with Mongo. So they, they know what is a good fit and what isn't. So we've had those conversations as well, and we can do whatever we can to make that as seamless as possible too. Well, I would, I would jump in there and, and remind people that you've got a both conversation there too. There may be components that need to be uh, lifted and, and moved, and there are other components that a traditional uh, relational database is going to fit better. And so right. um, is that conversation something that's also available and, and help to parse out what functions are going to fit better uh, in one, uh, one solution versus uh, the traditional place they are coming from? Yeah, yeah, that is... We we will we look for the best solution for what it is that you're trying to do. We we're not going to say you need to use Mongo and you need to use Redis. If you come to us and say I'm interested, um, we'll kind of talk about what you're looking to do. But ultimately, if MySQL is a better fit for the data, then you know it's better to keep it in MySQL. If if we find that what you're trying to do Mongo is the better solution or maybe Redis is the better solution, we'll do that. Or a combination, like you said, we have customers that are using MySQL, Redis, and Mongo in tandem. And, you know, a little bit of Hadoop on the side because they are running some hardcore analytics. So, you know, we have customers that do everything. And it's we're, we're kind of in an age now where it's not a one database uh, fits all solution. So that's kind of what we're working towards is kind of this, uh, we want to work towards a platform that kind of encompasses everything. We can we can get you a data store that's going to help you do pretty much any, any type of data, any type of action you need to do. We can put it all together and kind of wrap it all together under like a seamless umbrella. So... Yeah, and just, and, just to and, piggyback off that. Oh, sorry. I was I'll just going to say, Andy, Andy and I had a conversation last week. Uh, someone from um, someone from the the Rackstrace, uh, inter enterprise side had uh, reached out to to myself about a, a, one of their customers who was doing. Um, it, it was just kind of like a little like, uh, essentially, it was kind of like a photo scavenger hunt kind of deal. Um, and it was just going to be up for a week or two weeks, I think, um, was, was the length of the project. Um, and they had, had done it on their own last year with Mongo. Our account manager, he had suggested, you know, using us. Um, and Andy and I had got on the phone with them. And, and you know, like Andy said, after, after kind of seeing what they were doing and how that they were planning on, on going about doing it, um, you know, Andy suggested, hey, you guys could probably just use MySQL for this and, and use, you know, Cloud Files as, as a, as a back-end, you know, CDN. There's, there's not really, unless you guys really want to use Mongo, there's not, you know, any particular benefit that you're going to get out of that. And, and I think that they, they were really appreciative of that because, you know, as, as Andy said, at the end of the day, we're trying to do what's best for the customer, not just, you know, get them to use stuff that, that they possibly don't need. Yeah, and I was going to say a pretty good example of that is our friends at Untapped. So Untapped is one of our um, really good customers. Um, Greg, who's the CTO and co-founder, is actually my buddy. We were chatting today. He's going to be speaking at a meetup in New York City on April 7th. So you guys want to learn more about how they're using sort of MySQL and Mongo in conjunctions, definitely come out. If you're not in New York, sucks for you. Cause it's and Redis. Crazy. And Redis. Sucks for you. This is a cool city, but we're going to record it, and we'll put that on. Um, we'll make sure that you guys have access to the video of Greg kind of telling his story. But really what they did was, you know, talking about relational, they started on MySQL and then didn't just move everything over to Mongo because it's not a, it's not the panacea. They just moved sort of their, they call it their friends feed. It's the social aspect that is super difficult to scale because, I mean, I don't know about you, but my thumbs are always tweeting. I'm always checking in somewhere. And so things like social feeds can be a pain in the butt to scale, but then we have people like Andy and Joe Ingo and, and you know, John Moore and all these guys, these customer data engineers that will work on that. And so now Untapped has a, you know, a huge sort of data service portfolio of Mongo, of MySQL, and of Redis. So it's pretty cool, but yeah, I think that's, that's a really good question. Alan, you Yeah, uh, so so we did have a uh, another couple of questions here. Um, uh, Skip asked again a um, question about working with his um, existing. He has a hardware firewall at Rackspace. Um, will he be able to, uh, to, to, to? Will this work behind my existing Rackspace firewall? And will this be available over my existing encrypted tunnel between my office and Rackspace? 
So yeah, looking at this question, we have a we have a lot of customers that are on the dedicated side that have their own hardware firewalls and. Um, like Danny mentioned, the ServiceNet capabilities that we have extend into our dedicated environments as well. So we can provide you with ServiceNet endpoints that will allow that communication to come from the dedicated hardware behind the firewall, or sometimes maybe kind of touch the firewall to come back down, um, you know, over to our platform. So you don't have to worry about going out of the data center or anything like that. Um, as far as the encrypted tunnel that you're already using, um, generally, the traffic that's coming from there with tunnels or proxies or VPNs, things like that, uh, generally it's going to come from a certain IP range, which can be allowed through to um, the instance in the ACLs, and you can just use the the endpoints that are there. And we have a few customers that are doing just that. So yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and the thing that helps out with that too, Andy, is the the Rax ACL sync that we have. Um, so like, if you are coming from Rackspace. Um, you have a, a you know a cloud account. You're able to throw in your username and your API. Um, and if it's if that's, I'm not 100% sure if that also works if the account is consolidated with your dedicated Andy. It may just be for cloud. Um, but it's it's able. You're able to kind of to link that um, with your API key, um, and it'll pull in all of the uh, the IP ranges that you have for your cloud account. So instead of having to go through and, and add every single one of those rack space. Uh, I know we also have one with, with AWS as well. Um, so if, if you know, you're know you not a current rack space customer, you got something on, on AWS, we, we do have a, a ACL sync with that as well. Yeah, you're right, Danny. And it is, it is cloud server, so that's, it uses the cloud account API. Um, we do have an API that we have available to everyone that you can actually... Um, put together a little bit of code where you can take your IP addresses from your servers on the Rackspace dedicated side and you can add them through our API. We have a couple of customers that do that. Um, so that's another option as well. Uh, so while they don't sync those, that can be another avenue. So, well, Great. Looks like there are quite a few different ways that we can make that, uh, make that work. Cool. Um, so we have a couple more questions. Uh, Skip had another question about pricing. Skip, I think we'll kind of uh, catch up with you offline on that one. There's a couple of different ways we can look at that. Um, I did want to answer this uh, last question that Robert had. Thanks again, Skip and Robert, for these great questions and helping us uh, move the conversation along here with these. Uh, Robert's next question is, are there any migrations in the past where you were unable to move data, um, uh, move data over due to stop gaps uh, technical stop gaps, and if so, does your team keep a public record of these? Um, so as far as not being able to move data over, um, so far I have not seen an instance of that in um, in the past year. Uh, we have had technical challenges that we've had to overcome. Like I said before, different service providers give different levels of access or maybe are, are a little less willing to give certain levels of access that we might need. Um, but we find other ways, um, and we've we've had customers that have come from um, different providers. We I had a customer who came from two different data centers that had four different Mongo instances that they were running, and they wanted to bring them all into Object Rocket on one instance, which uh, most of the normal avenues that we do bring all of the data in its entirety. And if there's any um, any kind of you know, trying to bring four into one is a lot more difficult, aside from being just taking a backup of the data and restoring it, which can be massive amounts of downtime. Um, but uh, we found a, a cool little tool with a fork of Mongo called Toku MX that actually allowed us to be able to stream those four instances into one on Object Rocket. So while there are challenges, we we find a way. If if there isn't a way out there, we make it. Uh, I've not afraid to write code, and we have a lot of very talented developers who can help with that, as well as operations folks. Um, where there's a will, there's a way, and we'll find it. So that's kind of how we approach it. Cool. Cool, cool. Good stuff. All right, well, hey, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Nikki, for helping us put this together um, and, and lining up Andy and, and Danny to talk to us. Um, really appreciate it. I think this is a great show, uh, very interesting. Uh, I know I learned a lot, and that's always uh, good for me. And you said it was a birthday? I think there was like a Feliz Cumpleaños in order. What was that about? 
this is actually the second year, uh, the second anniversary of this show. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, yeah. nah, nah, nah. Uh, Drew and I started this uh, two years ago. I did uh, March twenty th- first. Uh, actually, was the uh, technical uh, date for that one. But uh, yeah, we started it about two years ago. We've been. Doing I remember uh, uh, last year throwing confetti at you. I I do too. I do too. I'm still taking it out of my uh, out of my literally beard, at. But, uh, Yep. We're still taking that out of your hair, Alan. That. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was great, Danny. You uh, you actually helped us out quite a bit in the in the early days. Uh, you actually ah. were one of our first uh, technical directors and producers. So thank you very much for helping us move it forward. Of course, got, thank you got guys. Tyler now, who's uh, who's doing a great job as well. He's the best. Yeah, he's great. Um, so it's it's great, and it, we couldn't really do this without everybody that that, that watches um, uh, our teams that let us uh, off for an hour or two at a time to. Uh, work on these. So I just want to say thanks to everybody uh, that uh, that uh, has gotten us this far on this, and hopefully we'll we'll keep going for another uh, several years. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks, thanks. Drew and Alan. Thanks for, for having us. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, yeah, we'll do this again next week and the week after that, and uh, uh, keep going on for the next couple of years. So uh, catch us uh, roughly 1 p.m. every uh, every Thursday, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks again, everybody. Cheers. Adios. Bye.